Hey everyone, welcome back to Shop Life. We're back at it again with another talking video. I know a lot of people like these. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about one of the most common stigmas associated with the BMW brand, their reliability. So everybody knows, or everybody thinks that they know that all BMWs are unreliable. And I mean, I guess that is, to an extent, it is true. So this is just gonna be like, you know, a, a video that I'll just discuss my personal thoughts on BMWs. I mean, I've been working on them for quite a while now. I've worked on all kinds of different series, uh, newer ones, even older ones from the 80s. So I've pretty much, you know, worked on almost every series that's been out there for the most part. So I've got quite a bit of experience and I, I know exactly usually what goes wrong with uh, most of these cars. And I, I get to see the condition that I get them in. So, you know, it all depends on how you see the car and how you, you know, how, however you purchased it. So, you know, first things first, we'll just talk about the most common issues that everybody has with them. First thing is, it's not a BMW if it doesn't leak oil, right? So oil leaks, that's one of the most common things. Now we have the cooling systems. Cooling systems, they're usually, a lot of stuff is made out of plastic, a lot of stuff breaks. Next thing we have is electrical issues. So the electrical issues, that's more common in either when the car is really old or when they're really new and you know, you buy them secondhand with all the new technology that's available with these cars something's always going wrong. So, I mean, that's with a lot of other cars too, though. I mean, you gotta think about it. With the advancements in technology, people are stuffing pretty much everything they can into cars. They're pretty much making the car a computer. You don't even have to leave your car to do anything at this point. You can run an office out of your car. So, you know, all that extra technology that you get, you know, 10, 15 years down the road, just like any other technology, like you don't keep your phone longer than, what, two, three years before start, stuff starts messing up. Same thing with the car. It's technology. At the end of the day, any electrical component can fail, and more than likely, it will fail. Um, luckily, there's people like me that are able to replace them, uh, you know, work around them, figure out how to repair them. You know, there's so many different options out there, but the more, you know, the more you do that's not how it came from, from factory, the more issues you might have in the future. So that brings me to my first point on BMWs. So, reliability. You know, there's two things with reliability. I mean, you have to have a good starting point and you have to keep the car as close to that starting point as possible. So let's say you bought the car brand new. Obviously, you can't keep a car brand new. You're going to drive it. You're going to put miles on it. But you can maintain it. Maintenance means you have to keep maintaining it. That doesn't mean that you fix things as they break. Now, when you start fixing things as they break, obviously, everything becomes unreliable. Because let's say, all right, so I'll give an example that a lot of people will know. Um, the E46, right? Everybody knows the cooling systems on there are trash. I mean, trash. I mean, I say it figuratively because they're not that bad if you keep them maintained. So the most common thing that usually breaks first is the expansion tank. Now, if you replace only that expansion tank, let's say you're at 80,000 miles, you replace the expansion tank, but you don't replace anything else. None of the stuff that you've touched, like the hoses, the cap, the sensor, nothing. You don't touch anything else. You just replace that one part. Obviously, if that one part failed, most of those other things that are also made out of that same plastic, they suffer the same heat that that expansion tank goes through, all the heating and cooling cycles, is eventually going to break. So if that expansion tank broke, chances are the rest of the components are on their way out as well. So if that breaks, you take it home, you drive it around a month, two months, and then something else breaks. You're always thinking like, oh man, I got to take it back to the shop, it's got to get work done again, and that's why everybody thinks they're unreliable. So on these cars, you can't fix things as they break. And I'm not just talking about the E46. I'm not even talking about just BMWs. I'm talking about all cars in general. If you're in a certain area repairing something, a lot of people may consider it as throwing away money, but you gotta look at it at the opposite way. You're preventing it from, you're preventing yourself from throwing away more money in labor cost rather than just paying the money for the parts. Um, obviously, you also have to find a good shop. So a good shop, good person that's working on them, or you do what I make these videos for, do it yourself. There's so many resources out there now. It doesn't matter what kind of car you have. I mean, there's so many resources out there. You just have to educate yourself and you have to be willing to get dirty. But if you don't, there are tons of good shops out there. I know a lot of people think all auto, auto shops are you know, just trying to take advantage of you, but look at all your resources, look at forums, look at Yelp, look at reviews, and try to find somebody that you can trust. Now, so with BMWs, the thing with BMWs, it's the ultimate driving machine. And people pretty much put that to the test. So the people that buy these cars brand new, 
they usually have you know enough money or they have really good credit they're gonna they're gonna drive these cars hard I mean when it's new you have warranty you really don't have to worry about much so I mean you're gonna push it it's meant to be driven hard so people will drive them hard with that being said the harder you drive it you know the more things that you're gonna wear out I and mean, that's just that's just how everything works it's just like you know your jeans if you're gonna wear your jeans every day you're gonna you know go do all kinds of work in your jeans they're gonna wear out they're gonna get holes as opposed to jeans that you wear once a week or once a month right same concept applies to the car the harder you use it the faster it's gonna wear out but like I said maintenance you got to keep them maintained now don't get any don't I don't want anybody to get me wrong I'm not just trying to vouch for BMWs I know they have all kinds of flaws especially like you really don't notice all the flaws especially in each generation of the BMW until you know they're out of their warranty period and the second owner or the third owner starts owning it and starts driving it that's when you really get to know you know what those usual flaws are with the cars so every car does have flaws don't get me wrong I mean even Camry's Corolla's every car has flaws but most of the people that own these BMWs you kind of want you know you're you're looking at it at that prestigious level uh, you know if you paid a premium for it when it was new you kind of want that premium to stick even when it's used and it's cheaper than you know used cars of the same caliber for example a used 3 series is more often cheaper than a Camry or a Corolla of the same you know same spec as far as uh, you know the line like the S, SE or the 3 series like the 325, 330, whatnot. you get my point so now let's say like you know let's talk about more about the systems breaking so like the cooling systems, the oil leaks and all that like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, they, they happen for a reason. So BMWs usually run quite a bit hotter than most of the other competitors. They do this so they can you know, be emissions friendly. The whole EPA, you know, all these cars, they're becoming more fuel efficient day by day, uh, less emissions. So BMW usually tries to make that work by increasing the temperature. If you're into physics or environmental science or anything like that, you know that thermal efficiency is very important. So the hotter they can get it, the more efficient it usually is. So with that heat, you have the issues as far as like the cooling system. If it's plastic, hot, cold, hot, cold, it's going to break. Um, same thing with gaskets. Most of those gaskets are made out of rubber. Uh, they have some kind of metal backing to them usually so that they can hold shape, especially the main gaskets. But at the end, they're still somewhat of a rubber gasket. So rubber is going to fail over time, especially with all the heat cycles. So you got to keep that in mind. I know a lot of people complain that oil leaks are crazy. But you also have to be sure when something starts leaking, you have to repair it at, or maintain it as soon as possible. So even if you don't want to wait until some of these things, like some of the gaskets start leaking, you usually have somewhat of an idea of how long a certain component is going to last. So even if it's not broken, yeah, it might feel like you're throwing away money, but you want to replace and keep it maintained. That's why there's maintenance programs, that's why there's intervals, and that's why you know you have certain mileage where you have to do certain items. Gaskets, if you don't repair them once they start leaking, they usually cause a huge mess. Everything looks a lot worse than it really is, and more often than not, it takes out other components with it. So a common example of that would be like the whole E90 chassis. Uh, one of the most common uh, oil leaks on there is the oil filter housing gasket. When that starts leaking, it gets over the belts, it gets over all the hoses underneath the car, it coats everything and starts taking out a component at a time. So, you know, always try to take care of things uh, before they break or as soon as you start noticing something, take care of it and almost all of its counterparts at the same time. Now, for all of those people that, you know, don't like the hassle of, you know, having to get work done on your car, there's options out there. So, the first option, obviously, buy a new one. If you buy a new one, it usually comes with warranty. There's also extended warranties that are available. Even for used cars, there are extended warranties that are, that are available. You just got to make sure you read the fine print on those extended warranties. Know what they cover. Um, I'll make a whole separate video going over that whole fiasco eventually. Um, but make sure you're reading. Uh, if you don't want any of that hassle, you got to make sure you look through everything before you buy the car. There's so many resources out there if you are buying a used, still a newer BMW, but is used. Uh, there's all kinds of resources that tell you what's usually the problem areas of those cars. So, obviously, if you're buying a used car, used BMW, I don't recommend uh, buying one for you know your daughter or your son that's going to college. They're going to be like you know a few hours away or even more than a few hours away. Mainly because that might end up being a headache, especially if they're not too familiar with cars and if you don't have the time or access to them to keep them maintained. So. 
for you know things for situations like that just make sure you're making a wise decision don't just go with the name brand um, try to get something that's going to actually work so that's that's the other uh, other area where a lot of people go wrong you know they see the you know the price of these used BMWs usually lower than other models and they're you know quick to jump on them because they look good uh, you know the ultimate driving machine but they're lower for a reason because either the previous owner you know started noticing stuff that was going wrong or you know it's just it's gonna need you know it's gonna need maintenance so stuff like that you gotta you know it's always the case is if the price is too good it usually is too good to be true um, and another thing if you're buying a used BMW always get a pre-purchase inspection uh, and this applies to one that you know you're trying to buy it's, even if it has maintenance records doesn't matter get a PPI almost every shop even I believe most dealerships do that for you um, they'll go through the whole car and let, let you know the problem areas and let you know what's going on what's probably gonna need work eventually I know a lot of the videos I make on this channel you know highlighting the problem areas of these cars they scare a lot of people away but the main reason I'm making these videos is so you know what you're getting yourself into. Uh, I mean, I, I love the BMWs. Um, I love the whole brand. I love the whole community. That's one thing that no other car maker has. I mean, I don't care what you know, car culture you're a part of or car group, whatever you really like. Nobody can say that about that whole BMW community. The BMW community, there's so much aftermarket available for it. Um, there's just the people that usually buy them especially the used ones, they're almost always enthusiasts. Um, there's all kinds of forums, all kinds of resources, DIYs, you name it, there's so much out there for them. Um, yes, the parts are a little bit more expensive as well because you have to use reputable brands, but you know that's just associated with the whole car itself. When you're looking into anything premium, uh, I'm pretty sure most of you guys and girls know, whenever you buy something at a premium, it usually has premium cost associated with it. You're not buying a car, like, you know, a used car, even the used car at one point in time when it was brand new, it was very expensive. If you buy a car at that same price level, chances are it's gonna have similar costs associated with it for maintenance in the, in the long run as well. So you just gotta keep all that in mind. Uh, just try to, you know, watch as many videos, look up as many resources as you can before you purchase your car. I really hope that I didn't discourage a lot of you guys. I'm just trying to keep people informed uh, and just so that you know what to look for and you know what to expect when you're buying these cars. That way you're not in for a shock and you don't further tar tarnish the BMW brand more than it already has a stigma with the whole unreliability. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know the holidays are here, so happy holidays to everybody. Stay safe. If you're traveling anywhere, drive safe. Make sure you go check out any of my other videos, um, just like for road trip essentials, anything like that. Just make sure you're being safe on the road. I'll have everything linked down below. And, and if I've ever helped you with through this channel or even through social media, or if you just wanna help support me and the channel, make sure you click that join button right next to the subscribe button. It pretty much works like Patreon. Um, it allows you to like have some kind of a subscription. Uh, I think it's like $5 a month where you'll get added perks. You can get more one-on-one -on -one time with me. I'll answer questions more directly. I know a lot of people have been trying to get in touch with me, but as you guys will realize, I stay booked, very, very booked. I'm booked about two to three months at a time, and I don't get to get to my messages as, as soon as I would like. So if you are a member, I'll be able to respond to you a lot quicker. Um, you'll have more perks as well. Just make sure you go check all that out. And I really do appreciate all the support I've received over the past few years and all the continued support from all of my subscribers and everybody that I get to meet through this whole channel and through cars in general. Anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. Once again, happy holidays. Stay safe.